Hi everyone, my name is Vina, and along with Kelsey, Christina, Michelle, and along with Kelsey, Christina, and Michelle, I'm part of this year's Anatomy Memorial Planning Committee. Um, we want to welcome you on behalf of everyone um, on the committee and in our class, and we want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, just a couple of logistical things before we get started. We want to remind everyone to please keep their microphones muted at all times as we're going to be hearing from various speakers and we also want to encourage everyone who feels comfortable to do so to turn on their cameras so we can feel like we're together even though we are apart unfortunately um, we will be recording this evening for distribution to the family so please keep that in mind when it comes to turning your camera on and finally we also want to remind everyone really quickly that due to some logistical con concerns we won't be going into breakout rooms at the end of the program um, but instead we'll be concluding the evening with some special messages from the families of the donors. So without further ado, um, we'll begin the evening. We're really thankful that in a year filled with so much hardship, we're able to gather together virtually with faculty, administrators, and students from both the first and second year classes of medical students here at Robert Wood Johnson. And we also want to extend an especially warm welcome to all the family members in attendance tonight. The memory of your loved ones is something we will carry with us for the rest of our careers. While the COVID-19 pandemic greatly altered how we started medical school this year, the anatomy lab was luckily one tradition that remained. As we began school virtually, we met all of our classmates and professors through a computer screen, but when we had the opportunity to go into anatomy lab, it was our first opportunity not only to meet our peers, but care for our first patients together. And this ultimately fostered such a great sense of community among us, and we're, we're profoundly impacted by each moment we got to spend with your loved ones. Each week in Anatomy Lab, many of us explored the intricacies and complexities of the human body firsthand. Even those students who uh, spent their semester remotely were able to gain a wealth of information from the donors. And although our time uh, in Anatomy was brief, the faculty provided us with an amazing opportunity to explore our future careers through the lens of each unique donor. The class of 2024 is eternally grateful for the opportunity your family members have afforded us. The lessons they have taught cover more than just the structure and function of the body, but also the silent curriculum of the human connection and responsibility to the patient. With each block of our coursework, we build upon the foundational knowledge gained in our anatomy course. And as we grow into physicians and caretakers, we will always remember our first patients, the people we cared for and learned from. As a small token of our gratitude, our donor families will be receiving a pin of remembrance as well as wildflower seeds. And so our hope is that this can serve as a reminder of our ability to blossom into future doctors because of your loved one's generosity. We hope that these, in addition to this collection of student reflections and messages from family, can begin to convey our thanks. Tonight, we'll be hearing from some of the students and faculty who have shared reflections with us on their experiences with anatomy. And more reflections will also be included in the booklet that we'll be sending out after the ceremony as a memento of the evening. We'll also be hearing from Dr. David Seiden, one of our anatomy professors, and we'll be concluding the evening with some memories of our donors from their families. We will now begin with a short video presentation from the New Jersey Honor Guard in honor of those donors who served in the United States Armed Forces.
asked for the President of the United States, the United States Army, and the Grateful Nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. Thank you again to the donors for their service and their sacrifice. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. David Seiden, Professor of Neuroscience and Cell Biology here at Rutgers, one of the faculty members of the Structure and Function Program who has been teaching for 50 years now. We have the pleasure of learning from Dr. Seiden through our Structure and Function course. His reverence for the subject matter and the donors who make the course possible set the tone for day one. We're so happy to introduce him. Thank you, uh, Christina. Thank you for mentioning that 50 years. You, you, you left out the part that I started when I was 10 years old, but that's okay. Um, but seriously, uh, thank, thank you, Christina and Kelsey and Nina and Michelle for all of the effort that you put into organizing this. It's very challenging on, under any circumstances, but to do it remotely has been a, has been a thing. So thank you for, for all of your time and all of your effort. And thank you to all of the uh, our families and students who are uh, joining us tonight. And I especially wanna thank the students who invited me uh, to participate and to speak. It really is uh, an honor that I cherish and I appreciate the invitation. So I would like to begin by reading a brief piece that was written by a medical student at the University of Buffalo and has been included in their memorial service every year since 1999. It's entitled, The Greatest Teachers. The greatest teachers we could ever ask for were once among you and me. Walking the streets, going to work, making a living, living a life, probably very rarely thinking about what we would learn from them. The greatest teachers we could ever ask for were once friends to many, sharing a laugh, sharing a memory, sharing personal details, things that only the best friends know, sharing a love, sharing a life, and sharing a soul with the ones they care most about. The greatest teachers we could ever ask for never even knew any of us, yet had the courage and the willingness to be there for us, no matter how early or late. They shared with us all we could ever ask for, and we were eager to dive in and find out all there was to know. The greatest teachers we could ever ask for were people who don't even know, we don't even know but ones we know everything about. They will forever be with us, still teaching and reminding us every step of the way. They were more than notes or lectures or presentations. They were the greatest people that we will ever meet. May God bless each of their souls and all of their families. I thank every one of them for the greatest gift one could ever give. This was written by Dr. Jeffrey North, a 2003 graduate from the University of Buffalo School of Medicine, who completed his residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation at Temple University, and currently practices in the Philadelphia area. I'm sure that many of you do, as I often do, reflect on the fact that I, and all of us, have been the recipients of gifts from those whom we have never known. Sometimes the gifts are given anonymously and sometimes they are simply from people we never met. 
It may have been a scholarship endowment or a gift to a school we attended. It may have been something less tangible, such as what we have received from ancestors we never knew. We were given our culture, our values, our gene pool, and yes, our intelligence and talents. We did not earn these gifts. We were simply fortunate. Our medical students can now add to this list of gifts the gift of knowledge and insight into humanity that has been given by the people whom we are honoring this evening. People whose lives and dreams and hopes they never knew. To the students who are with us this evening, I want to say, you now have the knowledge and ability to help people in ways that others cannot. You can do this because you stand on the shoulders of those whom you never met, who gave you this most generous gift and allowed you to pursue a career in healing with skill and compassion. I would like to share a lesson from our medical school colleagues in Thailand. Thailand is a predominantly Buddhist country, and as such, due to their belief system, we would anticipate a cultural reluctance to donate organs, much less bodies. Nonetheless, Thai medical schools have an abundance of voluntarily donated bodies. This is explained by the very high regard in which teachers are held in that culture. Thai donors are granted the esteemed status of Ajahn Yai, which translates to great teacher. Thai medical students enter into a relationship with their Ajahn Yai, that is the familiar student-teacher relationship. The students always refer to the donated body as Ajahn Yai, great teacher, never as Sa, the Thai word for cadaver. Thai students interact with their Ajahn Yai in the same way that they do with their other respected teachers. They know their names, they greet them with the traditional bow, they pray for them at their temples, and they sometimes bring them flowers. Although our culture and traditions are different, I know that you all understand the special gift of knowledge that you have been given by your Ajahn Yai, your great teacher and the special position that this has allowed you to assume in our society. <clears throat> this special position carries with it not special privileges, but rather special responsibilities. Responsibilities that have been entrusted to you by these donors. Those who have the generosity to want to donate their physical beings to the cause of science and medicine have options for how they may do so. They may give one or more organs to help save or improve the lives of one or more recipients. Or they may choose, as have our honored donors, to give their whole bodies to you, to you to learn and acquire the knowledge necessary for the practice of medicine. By doing the latter, these men and women have chosen not to help any one individual recipient, but rather have chosen to help thousands of people whom they have never met. However, they have chosen to rely upon you to act as their agents by giving you the knowledge you need to improve the lives of these thousands of people. Now we must ask how we may say thank you. I suggest that the sincerest of all thanks would be for you to never forget from whence came your knowledge and your opportunity and for you to use your knowledge and skills with compassion and humanity to help improve the lives of the heirs and descendants and neighbors of these generous people and to live the altruistic life demanded by the profession of medicine and to always place the welfare of your patient above your own. I would like to conclude by quoting a brief passage from a book published in 2007 entitled Body of Work, written by Dr. Christine Montrose. Before attending medical school at Brown University, Dr. Montrose was a writer, poet, 
an English teacher. Having earned the Masters of Fine Arts and Poetry, she published this book when she was a resident at Brown University. She is now an assistant professor of psychiatry and human behavior at Brown and continues to publish books and articles. In 2015, she was named a Guggenheim Fellow in nonfiction. In the book, she writes about her experience in her anatomy class when she was a medical student. As a first year student, she would go home every day after anatomy lab and journaled her thoughts. She writes about her cadaver, whom she and her lab partners named Eve. Near the end of the book, she writes, and I'll quote, I think about the vast amount of knowledge I have acquired. When my mother called me to tell me about the surgery on my grandfather's leg and said femoral artery bypass, the femoral artery I pictured was not my grandfather's, but Eve's. I have never seen my grandmother's right middle cerebral artery that occluded to leave her left side debilitated, but I have seen Eve's and can picture its precise path and the brain matter it nourishes. Truly, when I listen to any patient's heartbeat or lungs or feel for someone's liver or pulse, or find tendons to tap with my hammer in order to test reflexes, the structures I picture beneath the skin are all, all of them, Eve's. I cannot begin to know what led Eve to give me such a gift. What I do know is that she neither knew me or knew anything about me, and yet she bequeathed to me this offering that has formed the foundation of my ability to heal. My hours with her neither cured her nor eased her suffering. The lessons her body taught me are of critical importance to my knowledge of medicine, but her selfless gesture of donation will be my lasting example of how much it is possible to give to a total stranger in hopes of healing. That lesson, when I am called upon to treat a critically ill patient, is the lesson I hope beyond all else to have absorbed. That's the end of the quote. I know that every medical student can identify with these thoughts. Not all of us have the literary talent to express these thoughts as well as Dr. Montrose, but we all have the ability to live the lessons in humanity that our donors have taught us. Doing so will be the sincerest expression of thanks can, that can be offered. Thank you all very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Seiden, for those wonderful words. Your dedication to our anatomy program during these hard times has been accepted with deep gratitude by myself and all of my fellow classmates. Some selected excerpts from Dr. Seiden's remarks are included in the booklet that will be shared with the families of the donors. Next, we have a short slideshow of images of fellow first year and second year medical students sharing what they have learned from their donors.
As you can tell, being able to learn anatomy in such a personal way has been an immense privilege that has impacted us both as students and future providers. We'd now like to follow this up with some spoken reflections from our classmates. We'll be starting off with a piece by first year medical students, Adrian and Uri, titled Old Friends, uh, presented by Adrian. Hi, thanks for having me today to read this poem that Uri and I wrote uh, called Old Friends. The mists of spring are wiped away like tears from a wistful eye. New, a shiny leaf unfurls, tip holding onto the stem, grasping like a small hand reaches around the thumb of its mother, gently like we hold an old friend's hand for the first time. Thankful for knowledge passed on, which we will forever hold close to our chest, between the ribs, presented to us before we even knew what the world promises. But none could match the vastness of summer, ocean's endless water reaching the horizon, trees exhaling across the forest, spreading their leaves like wildfire, sun-kissed fields once planted, now swaying, bent over books, studying, learning. We stand wide-eyed, bracing against the infinite knowledge of summer, wading through overwhelming details to find our old friend waiting open-armed in the same place they always were, as we discover what we're made of and made for. Fall tiptoes its way in, reminding us that summer is one of four. One last time, we hold an old friend's hand as the leaves fall away in brilliant reds and oranges revealing their veins, once covered by summer greenery. And the trees stretch their limbs, ready for their long rest, content with knowing that they've given what's needed for the next to grow and flourish. The winter's wind come round, comes round again, we know we're not alone. Despite a frost, not all is lost as seeds will sprout once more. For tulips are not the first buds of spring despite the frost, but because of it, peeping their heads and sleepy eyes into a world of possibility. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adrian, for that beautiful reflection. Donors' families will also see their words echoed on the gifts they will be receiving after the ceremony. We would now like to introduce second year medical student Sonia to share her reflection with us. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for um, having me speak. I just wanted to share a poem um, reflecting on how my time with, in the anatomy lab really taught me a lot about what it means to be a human being and um, taught me about myself as well. Um, so without further ado, I will continue with my poem, An Anatomic Sense of Identity. Who are we at our core? Every course, every organ system, every religion, every culture, every patient, every cell even tells me differently. I turn on the television, a vain attempt at avoiding the question, as stories of protests remind me that some still try to reduce us to not even the number of melanocytes, but rather the sheer amount of melanin granules in our skin. As though a simple histological slide could even begin to explore the depths of who we are. Some think more and try harder. They say who we are is in our brain, our heart, our breath. I ask you, my donor, who lies before me, your heart is no longer beating. Your mind does not light up our MRI machine. Even as we peel your skin and your fascia away and see a version of you, that even you yourself wouldn't be able to recognize in the mirror. You still remain unapologetically you. You are you, without the skin, without the beating heart, without the functioning brain, 
You are you. And of that, at least, I am positively sure. So when I ask you who I am, when I don't know, will you share with me the secrets of where I should cut to find our anatomic sense of identity? Right. Thank you very much. And I still haven't figured out where to cut to find our sense of, of identity. Thank you so much, Sonia, for your beautiful words. We will now hear from Jen as she shares a reflection on her time in the anatomy lab this past fall. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm very excited to share my reflection um, entitled Helping Hands. I glance at the clock, five minutes. Five minutes I've spent peering at the hand of the donor that I'd been working with for over a half hour. Despite the more unhesitating nature with which I explored the cauda equina, dorsal root ganglia, the trapezius and its accompanying transverse cervical artery, and the rhomboid major and rhomboid minor, the hand was different. The second hand continued to tick behind my head audibly, as if to say, just do it already, just touch it. All the while, I nervously tug at my scrubs. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, I was not able to visit a store to try on different sized scrubs before placing an online order. Now I found myself subconsciously tugging at the waistband while trying to tuck my thigh length shirt in. The scrubs were plum in color in my attempt to add a touch of my personality to the outfit, saving my light blue scrubs for another time. My face shield mists with each breath I take under my lavender filtered material mask with an additional surgical one over it, making the matching I tried to achieve a little of little use. And while these masks could prevent COVID-19 from penetrating, the barrier is no match for the smell of embalming fluid. Why, I think to myself, isn't the hand just another part of the body? Why can't I touch it? Just touch it. The clock approaches seven minutes I have been still. Something is sacred about the hands. When we touch each other's hands, we're creating a deeper connection. As a first responder on the back of an ambulance, I've held patients' hands when they were in pain to let them know that they could cry if they wanted. My sister, my cousins, and I used to skip down the street while playing outside holding hands. I have kneaded hollow dough with my hands alongside my grandmother as she passed down her sacred longtime family recipes. We connect with each other with our hands through the toughest of times to those of pure joy. In the following weeks of anatomy lab, we would continue to maneuver through the human body, but through it all, no experience felt as out of life as that of the hand. Could it be the fact that we do not think about our large intestine every day? Do we not communicate through our livers or express love through our pancreas? Snapping my conscious back to the patient in front of me, I take a moment to picture the patient's family all around him as he passed away. The love they shared as he took his last breath, making sure he knew that he was loved and supported through his passing. I picture his family giving their last hugs and kisses, holding his hand for the last time. My mind wandered to imagine the life he had before his passing. Maybe he was a lawyer. Could he have been a teacher or maybe a sports coach for his son, a loving father and husband? I wonder if I was the next person who would touch his hand after his passing, a stranger, yet one who has put so much thought into who he is and what his story had been. These thoughts consume me before I have the courage to hold his hand for myself. I take a deep breath, choke back tears, and then touched his hand without thinking any longer. My gloved hand feels the creased palm that is yet to be dissected for the following week's upper limb lab. Each fingernail was hard and smooth, an extension of each finger. My heart settles back into my chest from what feels like my throat, and I feel my pulse slow down. While the patient could not physically respond to me, I feel like I knew the patient more personally now. At that time, with no understanding of the muscles, the hand, the nerves that innervated it, or any of their blood supply, the anatomy was second to the human. Never will I know more about this patient, but I do know that he helped me in many ways. As my first patient in medical school, it was through his generosity that I can now point to that artery and say for certain that it's the gastroduodenal artery. And for that, I'll be a much better physician. However, more importantly, it grounded me in the knowledge and life of each patient outside of the walls of my office or operating room or emergency room, wherever my path takes me. When I shake each patient's hand, I will be grateful for the opportunity to cross paths with each patient in their greater life journey. And for that, I owe my first patient the largest of thanks. Thank you all. Wow, Jen. 
thank you so much for that. Um, we now want to take the time to share some personal testimonials from the family members of our donor.
thank you so much one more time to all the families for for sharing those words with us about your beloved family members and um yeah i have no words it's just it's it's such a privilege uh that you were able to give us a glimpse into who they were and we're really grateful that you've given us a small opportunity to know them as you did so we want to take one final moment of silence together um, to honor those who have passed So only the names of the donors from this year are listed here. We also want to acknowledge the donors from the previous memorial and their family members who joined us tonight as well. With that, our memorial event for this year is coming to a close. We want to extend our thanks to the faculty and staff of the anatomy program and the Anatom anatomical association, including Dr. Grace Enfield, Dr. David Seiden, and Rebecca Santiago, as well as our classmates who helped make this event possible despite the limitations of being on Zoom. On behalf of the Anatomy Memorial Committee, the American Medical Student Association, and the Robert Wood Johnson Class of 2024, we want to thank you for attending tonight's ceremony. We hope that we have been able to convey our heartfelt appreciation for the sacrifice your loved ones have made for us. We'll be sending out the gifts, including a hard copy of the booklet of student and family reflections following the ceremony. We will carry the memories of your loved ones with us for the rest of our lives. Thank you again and have a very good evening, everyone.